Good evening on this primary election night. You've still got time to cast your vote if you haven't done so already. We begin with our team coverage tonight. All of our reporters are with the four candidates for governor. We're going to start with Brian Malahi. He's with Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, who was leading in the most recent poll before today's election. Brian? Yeah, we're in Fairview, the Lieutenant Governor's hometown. He's with us now. A couple of hours to go. How do you like your chances tonight? Well, we feel really good about things. We feel confident. Um, we know our voters are turning out, and there's two hours left, so if you haven't voted yet, we need you to vote right now. The arrows seem to be pointed in one direction, particularly in the last two weeks in this race, and they all were pointed at you. Did it hurt you? Well, y y of course, it's never fun to have those arrows pointed at you, but that's part of leadership. We have very broad shoulders, and when you're winning, the arrows get pointed at you. We made a commitment to run a positive campaign. We haven't attacked any of our competitors. We're very proud of that, and uh, we look forward to seeing how the voters respond. Tonight, you're going to have a drive-in movie theater party. You're coming home to Fairview. Your colors are the John Deere colors, yellow and green. How important is it for you to be here tonight? Well, look, we've never had a candidate for governor from San Pete County. This is a really big deal for, for us and for the people that live here. It's a special place, and we're, we're excited to be home with our friends. Okay, Lieutenant Governor, thanks for joining us. He's looking for a job upgrade. We're going to have more coming up throughout the night. Brian Malahi in San Pete County. Thank you, Brian. John Huntsman following close behind Cox in the most recent poll. Christina Flores live with the candidate and former governor who's on the men from coronavirus. Christina? Obviously, this year, very different for a variety of reasons, including COVID-19. So how are you doing today? You're normally around crowds, around people. This year's very different. It's very different, Christine, and it's been different from the beginning <clears throat> because who would have guessed at the outset six months ago that COVID-19 would be a part uh, of the whole campaign. And so that's lasted a good duration of the campaign. We've had to revise and be a little more creative and thoughtful about connecting with people because you just don't have the traditional events, the town hall meetings, mm -hmm. the, plus, uh, the pre pressing of the flesh uh, that uh, politics is known for. So you do Zooms and you do whatever you can to make up for it. But I think the debate has suffered somewhat because we haven't been out and as active over the last many months. Mm -hmm. There's so much to talk about, whether it's revitalizing the economy, which really is the most important priority post-COVID, and issues like mental health, which is uh, a unique challenge in this state, things that are really going to be long-term issues that governors and gubernatorial candidates ought to be talking about. And just a few more seconds, but despite those limitations, you're doing pretty well in the polls. This has been a neck-and-neck -neck race between right. you and Spencer Cox, so you must be happy about that. Well, you do the best you can. You get your message out there, and you know what? Whether you're campaigning via Zoom or whether you're out in public, Voters ultimately gravitate to ideas and candidates they believe in. Uh, they are smart and they get it. And they ultimately cast that vote and based on our system, we respect the outcome. All right, very good. Well, thanks for uh, talking to us. And sure. of course, we'll be here with Mr. Huntsman at his campaign headquarters throughout the night. But for now, we're gonna just toss it back to you in the studio. Christina, thanks. Went ahead to Michael Locklear now, who's with Greg Hughes tonight, and Hughes came in third in the latest poll leading up to today's election. Michael? Yeah, we're standing by with Greg Hughes. Talk to us about, uh, you know, voter turnout. We have a tight race. What did you do and what have you said to try to get voters to put that ballot in the box? It is exciting. They're looking at, we think the returns that are coming in right now show maybe the highest turnout we've seen in a Republican primary in state history. That's a good thing. Uh, and so what we've done on our part is we've said, look, we see that Democrats are saying, and my friend Jim DeBacchus, a former Democrat Party chair, now a registered Republican, telling people to change their party affiliation from Democrat to Republican for wh why? To vote against Greg Hughes. And so I've used that as a get out to vote with registered Republicans that are Republicans for real and saying, look, if, uh, if we're scaring the uh, the Democrats that much, we must be a pretty good conservative ticket uh, for your consideration. So we've been using, having some fun using some of those comments uh, to get out the vote and get people uh, to participate in their party's uh, primary, which we think is happening. This has been a tough choice for some voters with so many high profile candidates. What has it been like for you trying to make your case against? It's been tough. Look, it is a deep pool and it should be and it should be a tough race in a state like Utah with an open seat for governor. But we've really been issue based. We've got out there. We've been all over the state. Uh, we've worked very, very hard to really get this message out. Uh, and and that's what I think. I think that bears out in the polls. We would have no reason for seeing this race close 
like we do unless we've been more effective or we've been effective of showing that uh, we are the battle-tested conservative ticket running for governor and hoping to earn Utah support. Okay, Greg Hughes, thank you so much. He'll be heading to a private party in Centerville to talk to some of his supporters throughout the evening. We'll be there and bring you updates at 9 and 10. Back to you. All right, Michael, and our Jeremy Harris joining us live with Thomas Wright, the Thomas Wright campaign. Jeremy? Well, from here and what's your mission? Utah has so many pressing issues. The first is COVID. It, it hit us out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming. Small businesses are on the ropes. A lot of people are unemployed. Over 200,000 people have filed for unemployment. We've got to get Utah's economy back on its feet. I have a detailed plan on my website of how to do that. We also need to make sure that we give some comfort to parents about what's going to happen this coming year on school. It's causing a lot of uncertainty with Utah's children as well as the parents. We've got to address that. And then we need to talk about public education. How do we improve our public education system? We've had a teacher shortage for a long time. Teachers have been underpaid and underappreciated. We've got to get serious about improving our public education system. And then we've got to tackle some of the other challenges. We have a mental health crisis in this state. It's hard to talk about, but we can't be number one for teenage suicide any longer. We need to talk about our affordable housing crisis. We're 55,000 housing units short. It's really hard for Utah families to find a place to live. Got to talk about that. And I love talking about retooling and reskilling all those unemployed people. We have vocational and trade schools and institutions of higher education that we can use to enhance people's skills, to get them into careers that they probably never thought were possible. So there's so much work to be done for Utah's next governor. I really want to do this job because I'm passionate about all those issues. I have the energy, I have the enthusiasm, I have the experience, and I have the leadership capabilities to get it done. Okay, Thomas Wright, thank you very much, and we will send it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Jeremy. So a lot on the line here, as you just heard, you know, a lot of the polls are showing that the race might be really, really close, less than two hours left uh, to vote to get out there in the polls. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be keeping a very close eye on all the results as they come in. We're gonna be using our technology that we use in the weather department a lot of times to forecast all of the weather. So we've got these virtual graphics that we have created throughout the night. Now, this is just an example of the gubernatorial race. So as you can see later on tonight, this is how we will uh, show you the results. As you can see, we've got uh, Thomas Wright, we've got John Huntsman, we've got Greg Hughes, and Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox in this example. As the results come in, we will put the percentage vote that they received to give you the results a little bit later tonight. Mark. All right, Jim, thank you very much. A reminder for Davis County voters, you can still drop off your ballots today, even though ballots said they needed to be mailed by last Friday or dropped off by yesterday. The state election office says the dates on Davis County ballots were wrong. And again, you can still drop your ballots off tonight, but they do need to be postmarked today in order for that vote to actually count. There's still time to get out and vote. The polls in Utah don't close until 8 o'clock tonight. That means you have a few more hours to get your vote in. Stay with 2 News as we bring you the results throughout the evening. We'll start our election coverage at 9 o'clock tonight.